Uh, right, I decided to do a take two on this one. Because, well, my first one wasn't so well rehearsed, so I decided to go ahead and retry this. And that jingling in the background is my cat. So, first of all, before we get started, the top number, the one that's not crossed out, the first number is the scale for the first part of my geologic time scale that I'm going to show you. One inch is approximately equal to 16,666,667 years. And then when we get to the other half, or technically I shouldn't even call it a half, because the Precambrian period takes up most of Earth's history, everything that occurs after the Precambrian will follow a scale of one inch is approximately equal to 2,222,000. 222,222 years. So, yeah, let's begin our romp through this geologic time scale that I've drawn out. Okay, starting with stop number one is at approximately 4.6 billion years ago with the Big Bang, or rather the start of the universe and the solar system as we know it. Over here, you can even see my drawing of the solar system just falling into place. And then down here, we have a model of the molten Earth. For the longest time, Earth at this stage was literally an ocean of magma. It was constantly being bombarded by asteroids, constant volcanic eruptions. And speaking of asteroids, that is one of the most accepted theories of how the moon formed. As you can see, it's theorized that a large meteor or other celestial body crashed into the Earth, launching lots and lots of molten material from the gash in the side of the planet. And as the planet bled out that much molten rock, the molten rock just consolidated until rotation and gravity pulled it together to form the moon. And you can kind of see the scab, as I call it, on the molten earth. And here is just a here's just a rendition of what it may have looked like on the planet's surface during this time. Nice volcanic eruption. Nice river of magma. So the moon formed about 4 billion years ago, and the earliest known ocean and atmosphere formed about 3.9, when the first water vapor formed clouds, and eventually it had accumulated enough, so precipitation took forth, and we got our native ocean. Fun fact to know is that our ocean did not start off as the signature blue that we know today. Instead, it started out as a pretty dangerous red color. Then eventually it evolved into a sulfuric yellow, then a really icky green color before finally becoming the deep blue that we know today. Also, carbon dioxide and oxygen were starting to take hold at this point, and as it took hold at this point, the earliest known recorded life started taking place around mid-ocean ridges. A mid-ocean ridge is a point in the tectonic, well, in the Earth's crust where two tectonic plates are moving away from each other. So yeah, there's my representation of the ocean, and there was my cat. Okay, the oldest known bacteria and and what are known as stromatolites became apparent between 3.4 billion years ago and 3.2 billion years ago. And but that said, evolution was going to be on the fast track for the progress it was heading, right? Well, not exactly. In the periods between 725 million years ago and 590 million years ago is when Earth 
started experiencing a series of glacial episodes. The latter of those known as Snowball Earth is when glaciers and ice roamed rampant on the planet. So if you were one of the earliest bacteria, eukaryotes, prokaryotes, what have you, this would not be a very good time to exist at the moment. But strangely, they survived. And after the thaw, we got ourselves a huge explosion of life. And because the Precambrian period is just large enough to where it has to be drawn out as its own separate deal. This is the Paleozoic, Ceno Mesozoic, and Cenozoic in relation to all that you just saw from down there. So, so after the thaw, life decides to explode starting at 542 million years ago. Now let's continue on that way for the Paleozoic and Cenozoic time scale. Okay, now let's go to the Cambrian life explosion starting at 542 million years ago in the Paleozoic era. The Cambrian period also marks the highest amount of trilobites known to the area. This was their domination time. This is when they lived. And so just, in a, just a huge explosion of marine life from trilobites to cephalopods to bivalves and heck, even the earliest fishes. Moving on to the Ordovician time period is when jawed fishes started to evolve. Your sharks, your bony fish, what have you. And again, the marine life was still taking over until the Silurian period where we actually started to see some amphibian life begin to evolve. It wouldn't be until the Devonian that they would actually step onto the land. Moving on to the Devonian, it's marked by the evolution of amphibians and the evolution of ammonites. Ammonites are pretty much the precursor to species as the nautilus that can be found today. Then over here we have the Carboniferous, which was divided into the Mississippian and Pennsylvanian periods. Easiest way to remember the Carboniferous, Carboniferous period, I'm sorry, is to think of all the plant life that was becoming abundant on the land. In fact, a lot of coal mine operations, if you look at some of the coal from there, that's a lot of Carboniferous stuff. So yeah, the Carboniferous, the Carboniferous period gave us coal, which is a carbon-rich fossil fuel, because it's made from plant matter. Moving on to the Permian is when Pangaea, the supercontinent, had fully come together. Sorry about that. And we also saw a lot of evaporation at this point in time, which gave rise to some deserts. We even had some insects evolve at this point. But even though Pangaea was done forming during the end of the Permian, right afterward, it started to break apart. And now we move on to the Mesozoic Era with the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods. And you probably all know this as the age of the dinosaurs. And there's my outline of a T-Rex right there. 
not exactly the best that I could do, but you kind of get the point. But as I was saying about Pangea starting to break up, yeah, this it started to break up post-Permian, starting in the Triassic. And with that, I, I think you know where this is going. Back during the Carboniferous, or roughly 200... 50 million years ago, whichever, whichever you want to pinpoint as accurate is when the largest recorded mass extinction in history occurred, although studies say that the current time period that we're in, humans are actually, humans are actually causing what could be comparatively the biggest mass extinction known. And, of course, the most famous mass extinction happened around 66 million years ago, 65 million years ago, within that time period, when a six-mile diameter meteor cra crashed in the planet just off the coast of Mexico. Climate change ensued as a result. Species started dying off left and right. And it's even argued that increased volcanic eruption even helped speed up the process. That brings us to the end of the Mesozoic era and of the Cenozoic. Starting in the Paleogene era, or rather late Paleogene and into the in Neogene, we started to experience a series of ice ages and glacial progression. And, and if the Mesozoic era was the age of the reptiles, then the Cenozoic marked the dawn of the age of the mammals. Mastodon, saber-toothed cats, dire wolves, you name it. and into the quaternary, which only measures a few measly inches on this time scale across. Now, there were two, there were two major geologic points that I wanted to bring up. First off, see that red circle with the kind of omega symbol inside? The bone that you might see in Pokemon Omega Ruby and the times three next to it. I am using this to represent the three Yellowstone eruptions that occurred in all of them occurred in the Quaternary period. The first one occurred just at the brink of the Neogene and Quaternary about 2.6 million years ago. The second one, which was the largest, occurred about 1.3 million years ago, and then our most recent one was 640,000 years ago. People are saying that it, at this point in time, we're overdue for another eruption, but for every study that says, yeah, we're, yeah, we're doomed, yeah, we're toast, there's another one that says it's not going to erupt within our lifetime, and then there are still other studies that say it could happen, but we don't know when. And in fact, according to one study that I found, apparently the geologic activity involved in Yellowstone is starting to die off. I'll have to look into that more. But then the quaternary period is most famously marked by the evolution of humans, starting with Homo erectus, Everyone knows of the fossil called Lucy. It's, in, it's mostly incomplete at this point, but it gives us solid evidence, or at least a good measure of when humans start to evolve. And from Homo erectus, eventually, eventually we, we went on to evolve into the Neanderthals, the Cro-Magnons, and eventually Homo, Homo sapiens. And to represent that, I just drew 
Deep and Guy from the DreamWorks movie, The Crudes. And there you have my wonderfully drawn out time scale. Hope you guys enjoyed that, and let's, let's see where this takes us. And storm's rolling in, so good thing I got this finished. Thank you for watching.